Good evening. Welcome to the Mind of STEM channel, where you get your daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. My name is Leon Jones, and in this segment, I'm going to talk about chemical compounds. Now, this is very significant when you get into chemistry. And if you have listened to a few of my videos, I've talked about biology, chemistry, bacteria, because for the most part, they're interrelated because of this coronavirus. But it's very important that you understand chemical compounds. Now, before I go on, one must ask, what is a chemical compound? I'm going to get to that. So, what I'm going to give you tonight in this video is an overview of chemical compounds. So, the title of tonight's video is an overview of chemical compounds. Now, for the most part, when we deal with chemical compounds, a chemical compound is a chemical substance composed of many identical molecules or molecular entities composed of atoms from more than one element and held together by chemical bonds. Two atoms of the same element located in a molecule do not form a chemical compound. Again, two atoms of the same element bonded in a molecule do not form a chemical element, since this would require two different elements. Now, understand this. There are four types of compounds. Now, depending on how the constituent atoms are held together. Now, again, there are four types of compounds, and that depends on how the constituent atoms are held together. Now, the four compounds are molecules held together by covalent bonds. Then you have ionic compounds held together by ionic bonds. Then you have intermetallic compounds held together by metallic bonds. And then there are certain complexes held together by coordinate covalent bonds. Now, if you've taken chemistry, you understand that there are chemical formulas. You have to balance equations. Now, what I'm going to talk to you Next, in this topic of chemical compounds, I'm going to get into the chemical formula. So what is a chemical formula? Well, a chemical formula specifies the number of atoms of each element in a compound molecule instead of using the standard abbreviations for the chemical elements and numerical subscripts. Again, a chemical formula specifies the number of atoms of each element in a compound molecule using the standard abbreviations for the chemical elements and numerical subscripts. For example, a water molecule has a formula of H2O. We know H2O because it's two hydrogens and one oxygen. If you have H2O2, that's called hydrogen peroxide. Now, H2O indicates two hydrogen atoms bonded to one oxygen atom. So, many chemical compounds have a unique CAS number, and that CAS number identifier is assigned by the Chemical Abstracts Service. Now, globally, more than 350,000 chemical compounds and that includes mixtures of chemicals, have been registered for production and use. Now, a compound can be converted to a different 
chemical composition by interaction with a second chemical compound with a chemical reaction. Now in this process, bonds between atoms are broken in both of the interacting compounds. Therefore, new bonds are formed. Now, let's get in some definitions. Any substance consisting of two or more different types of atoms, we call them chemical elements, in a fixed stoichiometric proportion can be termed a chemical compound. The concept is most readily understood when considering pure chemical substances. Now, it follows from there being composed of fixed proportions of two or more types of atoms that chemical compounds can be converted via the chemical reaction into compounds of substances either having fewer atoms, or now we go into the ratio of each element in the compound is expressed in a ratio in its chemical formula. So a chemical formula is a way of expressing information about the proportions of atoms that constitute a particular chemical compound using standard abbreviations for the chemical elements and subscripts to indicate the number of atoms involved. For example, again, I just told you, water is composed of two hydrogen atoms bonded to one oxygen atom. So the chemical formula for water is H2O. Now, in the case of a non-stoichiometric compound, the proportions may be reproducible with regard to their preparation and give fixed proportions of their component elements, but proportions are not going to be integral. Like, we're going to have palladium hydride, PDHX. Now, chemical compounds have a unique and defined chemical structure held together in a defined spatial arrangement by chemical bonds. Chemical compounds can be molecular compounds held together by covalent bonds, salts held together by ionic bonds, intermetallic compounds held together by metallic bonds, or the subset of chemical complexes that are held together by coordinate covalent bonds. Now, again, pure chemical elements are generally not considered chemical compounds failing the two or more atom requirement, though they often consist of molecules composed of multiple atoms, such as in the diatomic molecule H2 or the polyatomic molecule S8. Now, many chemical compounds have a unique numerical identifier assigned again by a CAS. Now, CAS stands for Chemical Abstract Service. Now, the CAS assigns chemicals a number. Now, again, there is varying and sometimes inconsistent nomenclature differenti differentiating substances. Again, there is varying and sometimes inconsistent nom nomenclature that differentiates substances which include non-stoichiometric examples from chemical compounds which require the fixed ratios. Now, many solid chemical substances, for example, many silicate minerals are chemical substances but do not have simple formula reflecting chemically bonding of elements to one another when it comes to fixed ratios. Even so, the crystalline substances are often called non stoichiometric compounds because it may be argued that they are related to rather than being chemical compounds insofar as the variability in their compositions is often due to either the presence of foreign elements trapped within a crystal structure or otherwise the known true chemical compound or due to pre, um, prebitations and structure relative to the known compound that arise between the excess of deficit of the constituent elements 
at places in its structure, such as non-stoichiometric substances that form most of the crust and mantle of the earth. Now, other compounds regarded as chemically identical may have varying elements of heavy or light isotopes of the constituent elements, which basically change the ratio of elements by mass slightly. Now, again, this is some review. The types you have molecules, ionic compounds, intermetallic compounds, and complexes. Now, what about bonding and forces? Well, understand this. Compounds are held together through a variety of different types of bonding and forces. Now, the differences in the types of bonds and compounds differ based on the types of elements present in the compound. London dispersion forces are the weakest of all intermolecular forces. They are temporary active forces that form when electrons in two adjacent atoms are positioned so that they create a temporary dipole. Additionally, London dispersion forces are responsible for condensing nonpolar substances to liquids and to further freeze to a solid state dependent on how low the temperature of the environment is. Now, a covalent bond, also known as a molecular bond, involves the sharing of electrons between two atoms. Primarily, this type of bond occurs between two elements that fall close to each other on the periodic table of elements, yet it is observed between some metals and non-metals. Now, this is due to the mechanism of this type of bond. Now, elements that fall close to each other on a periodic table tend to have similar electronegativities, which means they have a similar affinity for electrons, since neither element has a stronger affinity to donate or affinity to donate or gain electrons it causes the elements to share electrons so that both elements have a more stable octet. Now, ionic bonding occurs when valence electrons are completely transferred between elements. Opposite to covalent bonding, the chemical bond creates two opposing charged ions. Now, the metals in ionic bonding usually lose their valence electrons becoming a positively charged cation. Now, the nonmetal will gain the electrons from the metal, making the nonmetal a negatively charged anion. Now, you have electrons, you have cations, and you have anions. Now, as outlined, ionic bonds occur between an electron donor, which is usually a metal, and an electron acceptor, which tends to be a nonmetal. Now last, hydrogen bonding occurs when a hydrogen atom bonded to an electronegative atom forms an electrostatic connection with another electronegative atom through interacting dipoles or charges. Now, Within chemical compounds, the question is going to come to the forefront. Well, you have your forces, you have your bonding, but what happens when chemicals react? Because chemicals do react. Now, a main uh, chemical that has some reaction. Sulfur is one that reacts. Uh, if you add something sulfur, um, sulfur is going to break up. Sugar, metals to non-metals, you're going to always have a reaction. Acid, that reacts. Well, a compound can be converted to a different chemical composition by interaction with a second chemical compound via a chemical 
reaction. Now, in this process, bonds between atoms are broken in both of the interacting compounds, and then the bonds are reformed so that new associations are made between atoms. Now, schematically, this reaction could be described as AB plus CD, which yields AD plus CB, where A, B, C, and D are each unique atoms, and A, B, A, D, and C, D and CB are unique compounds. But at the end of the day, when it comes to chemical compounds, you have bonding forces, you have reactions, and overall, when you're dealing with chemical compounds, there are four types. There are molecules, ionic compounds, intermetallic compounds, and certain complexes. And remember this, a chemical compound is a chemical substance composed of many identical molecules or molecular entities composed of atoms from more than one element held together by chemical bonds. And that concludes this video on chemical compounds. If you like what I just presented, please comment, share, and subscribe. You can also check out my other channel, it's a 401 Talk Zone radio show. I give you red pill content. Most of that content deals with politics and social issues. I also get into psychology. I get into dieting and health. Channel's another good education channel. And to sum it all up, I also have a blog talk radio show. I do blog talk radio every weekend. It could be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Do good topics on that. You guess call the number. It's 215-383-5785. Now, if you cannot find me on YouTube, I post all of my videos and my blog talk radio shows on Twitter and Facebook. Again, Thank you for taking your time to view this video. I want you all to have a wonderful evening. Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. Please have a wonderful and blessed day.